Dr. Peter Goldman and Dr. Nate Brown with an E. Thank you guys for coming in. Thrilled to be here. Love coming. Super psyched for today. So how did you and Nate meet? Well, um, I started Zone School, I think it was 2017. And it was 2017. Yeah. And um, not too long into Zone School, we'll say 2018-ish, uh, Dr. Nate joined the online program, started learning. Um, I'm sure he was always a great chiropractor, always a great doctor. And I'm sure he'll tell you that now, knowing what he knows with the knowledge he's learned, he's able to produce healings that he probably never even could have dreamed of or thought about at that time. Now he does them routinely. And in zone school, I do teach live events, and I taught a live event in Vegas. We should hang out with Tommy in Vegas. I can imagine what that would be like. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I, uh, I taught a live event in Vegas, and that was a really good one. That was a really great live event. It was only the second. Now I've taught, I don't know how many freaking live events I've taught. I feel like I've taught 40 of them. But um, I taught a live event in Vegas, which was only the second one at the time. And... Um, Nate came. He was in the school, you know, as far as the online program, but he showed up. And um, I remember one thing I'm sure he could tell you, but, and if I get any details wrong, he can correct me. But when he came, not only did he come to learn, of course, but I think his shoulder was quite injured. And um, I think he was maybe going to get shoulder surgery or something like that. He can give you the details if I'm getting them wrong. And during this, all this uh, live events that I teach, you know, I'm in a room with whether it's 50 doctors and chiropractors and healers or whatever, or whether it's, you know, 20 or 30 or whatever. That one was pretty big. I forgot how many. I might have had like 40, 40 people in there. And I always work on anyone. Any, anyone who wants to be worked on, like I worked on your producer, Rob, at the time. I give him a two minute session. And what's interesting is a lot of these doctors have problems of their own. They have maybe uh, it could be a musculoskeletal problem, a pain problem, or it could be a organic problem. They might have, maybe they have trouble with their digestion or maybe if, if it's a woman with her period or something like that, or it could be neck pain or back pain. What, what's interesting, a lot of them with even neck and back pain, even though they're chiropractors, they probably get adjusted all the time. They have these long standing musculoskeletal problems, their shoulders, their knees, their back, their neck. And they come up and I work on them and they are better they're better. So in that particular event in Vegas, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Nate came up. I worked on him for two minutes. His shoulder was fixed. He went home. He didn't have to get surgery. His shoulder's fine now. And actually, that was a unique um, event because there was a guy there who had hearing aids. He was a chiropractor. He had hearing aids. And I, I noticed that he was having trouble. I, I think his hearing aids were hooked up to his phone somehow. So there's a thing on the phone that's connected to the hearing aid. And that particular room they gave us, it was too big. In other words, I had 40 people, but it was it was a room for 70 people. So the the, the acoustic the acoustics were very odd, because I'm the room is so big, but whatever. And I saw he was having trouble with his hearing aids, so I said, "Come up, we'll fix your ears." And we fixed his ears, and he can hear. He went home and returned his hearing aids. So I wouldn't believe a lick of this if I didn't see it and hear it from another gentleman that I sent over to you. So I've seen this in person. Yeah. So it, I don't know how you do it, but I, I've seen it. I don't exactly know either. And, <laughs> and then also. And I don't know how you sell it without seeing it, but I've seen it. <laughs> and then there was another guy there, a uh, chiropractor for, who was also in attendance, who I don't remember the exact name of his eye condition. I don't remember. But if you if you looked at him at the time, you could see like one of his eyes was a little shut, the, the lid, and he couldn't. I don't think he was blind, but he couldn't see well. He was probably legally blind. In that eye, in that eye, yeah. What's odd is we had uh, Korn in, and one of the singers with Korn, he was like the vocalist. He's blind, legally blind, still to this day. I think, and somehow, I mean, he just he can kill it. Yeah. So I think, I think, uh, but you could see that eye thing, like right. you were talking about. So I, I could see it, and and like you said, I don't know if he was a, I don't know what the official title, legally blind, but. He couldn't see. So what we did is I had him come up in front of everyone. I, I happened to have a whiteboard there. I was drawing a couple things while I was teaching. So I drew something. I don't know exactly what. I told him the cover of the eye that worked, you know, the eye that had 20-20 vision and look with that. And he couldn't really see anything. And then we worked on him. And then he could see not perfectly, but vastly improved. So when Nate, you know, back to meeting Nate. So Nate shows up there. We fix his shoulder. He doesn't need surgery anymore. He sees a guy get his sight restored. He sees a guy get his hearing restored. Then he became very involved in 
zone school. And at some point he approached me and said, Pete, you know, maybe I could help you with zone school and make it bigger and bigger. And right now I think we have about 1,300 members worldwide growing quickly. So Nate has helped a lot. So Nate, it was really the needle that you saw him put through somebody that got you interested? Well, it's, it's actually funny because that was after the fact. What really got me interested is exactly what he said. I mean, I'm not a big seminar guy. I've been in practice for 10 years and I joined Zone School, um, and the first opportunity I had to actually go to a live seminar, the second seminar, was in Vegas. Um, and I was, I knew what I was getting into because I'd studied the material for a couple months before I went, but I had no idea what I was going to see when I got there. And like I say, like I've told everybody, I mean, I went to that seminar and I came back with this just epiphany. I said, hey, I saw with my own eyes a blind man that could see and a deaf man that was able to hear on account of his hands and really nothing else. Cause how many people believed you when you told him that? Well, you know what? Not too many, but you know what? <laughs> I am yeah. pretty, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about what I do. And then, you know, it just, everything started to evolve, uh, you know, from that point on. Cause once again, you know, I was in this profession and doing my thing for years. Um, I was drawn to Pete. I, you know, I'd seen him and like a Facebook ad or something of that nature, advertising zone school in the very beginning. And uh, yeah, I decided to join. I was uh, very fascinated by the stuff that he was talking about. I w wouldn't say I was a non-believer, but you know, like most people, you wanna see something with your own eyes and kind of get the gist of what's going on. Um, so I did. And then from that point on, I was like, wow, this is really what you know we're here to do. I mean, this is, this is not just the garden variety chiropractic, this is, pretty intense um, and hard to believe, but fascinating at the same time. So why not do this? This, I mean, why not, you know, evolve around this and really take this on, immerse yourself, or immerse myself in the material and just be better. And that's all I wanted to do was be better. I always thought I was, you know, pretty good, but I knew, you know, you know, you always strive to do more and want to do more. And this was, you know, the opportunity to do that. Yeah. But what makes you willing to risk your career? <clears throat> your life, your income. You were a chiropractor for how long? 10, 14 yeah. years at the time? Yeah. And you give that up to go with Dr. Pete. Well, here's what, what was the big turning point? Yeah, you saw him make a guy not deaf. You made it made a guy not blind. That's enough to give up your 14, 10, 14 year career to go with him? Like, what was the banger that you were like, okay? Well, the good news is this, is, is that I really didn't have to give up anything because I own my own business. I am a chiropractor. Um, it's just a matter of, making the time and, and evolving with myself, my career, my passion. Um, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a great healer, I like to think. But, you know, I do things on my own terms. So I was able to finagle that all together to work with him, get that experience, um, help, you know, bring on other doctors, teach other doctors, expose other doctors uh, and healers to the technique. Uh, and through my passion uh, and his passion, you know, really get it. I mean, and I, I mean, make no mistake, I spent the first, you know, two years really immersing myself in the material, getting to a point where I felt very, you know, confident and comfortable uh, with what I'm doing. And now, uh, the way that I operate in practice and, you know, with his own school, and it's just the, it's just the way that I see things. I don't have to like psych myself up. I don't have to think about it. It's just like, like we always say, it's like gravity. You know, you take a pen, you're going to drop it. You know, it's going to fall. I'm not going to argue, like tying your shoes. You, gotta, you know, that's how I look at things in my life as far as, you know, the healing is concerned. I bestow that on my patients, my family, my friends, and, you know, the people that I meet and come across. It's very powerful work. And looking back, I, you know, I feel as though I'm blessed because I didn't get this at the end of my career. I got it at a good point, 10 years. So I didn't give anything up. Um, I added it to what I was doing to my repertoire. And just like anything else, you perfect things, you evolve, you know, you do things in life. The way that you do things, the way that you've done things for years, you evolve with yourself and what's out there. And, you know, you want to make the best decisions. This podcast is brought to you by Monster Energy. Tear into a can of the meanest energy drink on the planet, Monster Energy. It's the ideal combo of the right ingredients in the right proportion to deliver a big bad buzz that only Monster can. Monster packs a powerful punch, has a smooth, easy drinking flavor. Athletes, musicians, co-eds, road warriors, metalheads, geeks, hipsters, and bikers dig it. You will too. Monster Energy is more than just the green OG. 
Monster has Monster Ultra, Juice Monster, Monster Hydro, Rehab Monster, Dragon Tea, Monster Max, Muscle Monster, and many more. Buy on Amazon, buy on Walmart, or go to MonsterEnergy.com and believe me, you'll find a place. Unleash the beast. Monster Energy. This episode is brought to you by Let's Get Checked. Are you the man your father was? Recent studies have shown that men's testosterone levels have dropped substantially since the 1980s at about an average of 1% per year. Think about how old your father was when he was born. For example, if he was 30, your testosterone levels could be 30% lower than his. Low testosterone levels can have all type of health effects on men. It can affect your mood, sex drive, memory, muscle mass loss, you name it. And yes, low testosterone is more common the older you get, but it can affect men at any age. So let's talk about today's sponsor, Let's Get Checked. You can order a testing kit that will be delivered to you in a discreet packaging with next day delivery. Once your sample arrives in the laboratory, confidential results will be available from your secure online account within two to five days. So, if you want to test your hormone levels without having to leave your home, visit trylgc.com backslash mscsmedia and get 25% off your test using the code mscsmedia. The link is in the description at the top. I see. So, so you had your own business. So you were able to merge the two. So you kept your practice, what you were doing, and started leaning in with Pete, it's, checking it out, see what's going on. But you're, you still have your thing gone. And then eventually you see enough and you say, okay. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, we travel together once a month. We, you know, I help him run the intricacies of the school. We come up with different ideas. But, yeah, I mean, I still go to my practice. I still heal my patients. I still, you know, do everything else as normal. Um, but yeah, you know, you, you finagle things around your schedule. Exactly. Yeah. And, and listen, you got to love what you do and you got to, you know, be into what you're doing. And I'm blessed because I love what I do on all, on all accounts. And there's not much monotony in my life because every day is a little bit different, which I think is totally cool. And, uh, <clears throat> we'll look at this on your Instagram later, but tell me about what you did to Tony because we just did Tony and he said you put a needle, what do he say? He put a needle through his hand. His arm. His arm. So, so tell me about so, that situation. So basically, the the idea is this: <laughs> that the the idea is that the ideas in your subconscious manifest in your body. Matter of fact, uh, theoretically, not well, th- actually not theoretically, um, factually, your body is changing at multi million cells per second in response to, to the ideas in your subconscious. So, a hypnotist. I'm not a hypnotist by trade, but I'm I am a good hypnotist. Um, a hypnotist can put someone into a hypnotic state and what happens is their conscious mind moves aside and their subconscious mind becomes wide open. And at that time, the hypnotist, hopefully they know what they're doing, they can put the concept in the subconscious they want. Then they take the person out of the hypnotic state. But that concept that they put in there while they were in a hypnotic state is still in the subconscious. That's why it's called a post-hypnotic suggestion. Post meaning after hypnotic because they were in that state for a moment but the suggestion stays in there so what i when i teach healers and even teach lay people and tony years ago was in a class that i taught and of course years later nate saw me do it in someone's neck what i'm trying to show them is if i can do a demonstration where i put someone in a hypnotic state and then i numb i numb their arm or i numb their neck and then i take a i take a big chunk of their skin i take a pin you know from a like from a big pin and I stick it right through or I, or I take a big chunk of their arm and stick it right through and they don't feel anything and there's no blood there's no hole and then you know I leave it in for a minute because everyone comes up and looks and they're fascinated that's exactly then, what he right, said then I, then I take it out and there's nothing and they're wide awake when I do it now obviously if they did not have the post-hypnotic suggestion in their subconscious you take a pin you try to stick it in someone's neck arm they'll be screaming pushing you off them bleeding etc but the point is if I can give an idea to the subconscious, which is gonna manifest in the cells of the arm or the neck, then I, I show healers why, then then if we can do this, which we can, then we can also give that idea to a thyroid that needs to heal, or a liver that needs to heal, or a pancreas that needs to heal. So in addition to the physical exchange you have, which could be a chiropractic adjustment, or an acupuncture needle, or an herb, or, a, or a whatever, a pharmaceutical, the idea given along with it if it's put in the subconscious properly, not with hypnosis, I teach how to I teach how to still stick the stick the idea in the subconscious while we're wide awake. But I just like to show it with hypnosis to show the power of an idea in the subconscious. Now, 
as far as the you know, the funny thing is that's a funny story. Well, first of all, why did Tony come there to begin with? Well, why did he initially come to you? I think to I mean for the to that seminar where I put the pin in his arm or just for healing? We'll start with the healing and then we'll get back to the, the pin that he was really showing us. Yeah. Like, what the when, fuck? When when Tony uh when Tony came to me, which was I think two thousand two, I think, maybe two thousand three. He had a sinus issue, which they wanted to actually do surgery on his sinuses. I don't know what the name of that issue was. And he had an ab a terrible abdominal issue. They actually wanted to do, uh, I think a gastroenterologist wanted to do surgery on his abdomen. And, of course, I fixed him up. And they wanted to cut him wide open, Cut him right? wide open for here. Two different procedures. You know, one day here, maybe it takes a couple months to heal. Then one, I don't know what they wanted to do first. But when he came to me, he told me they had terrible sinus condition, which required surgery, according to the doctor and terrible digestive condition, which required surgery, according to the other doctor. I, I guess this was the ear, nose, and throat, and that was a gastroenterologist. But I said, no, I'm going to balance your body. I'm going to fix your sinuses and fix your digestion. You're never going to need either surgery, and that's what happened. The second part of the thing, uh, I just was teaching at the time, many, many years ago, some seminars for lay people, just about this kind of topics, and he showed up, and during it I was showing about concepts in the subconscious, which could lead to uh, wealth or health or whatever. And I did it, I, I put the pin in several people's arms, him being one of them. But the funny thing of the story was, I got a, I got a friend, his name is Rich Guzzi. He's, Rich Guzzi is his name. He's a, he's a very famous hypnotist. He's one, one of the better hypnotists, I think, living right now. He's a nice guy too, really nice person. And um, when I met him, I had known that he was like the trainer of trainers, meaning hypnotists who train other hypnotists, like how to do stuff, he trains them. He's like a very renowned hypnotist. So I showed him this video, the one you're gonna show. You know, I showed it to him. I, I just thought it was like- Can you pull up the Instagram? And he said, he goes, Pete, probably only three hypnotists living in the world can do that. And I was like, oh shit, I, I, I thought it was nothing because the way I learned it, it was nothing. But apparently hypnotists don't do this. Let's take it like this. As it spins. And can you unmute that, Scott? Jeez. Perfect health, normal. Like in the dream, it happened. Perfect health, normal. You might as well mute that. It's not good. Nothing. Nothing. That's insane. Nothing. No blood, no nothing. No, no blood, no hole, nothing. Did you I, see that? Nate was there. Nate was, was there. a Nate was a few inches Nate, away. I was right there. Right. Did, did that blow your mind? Or at that well, point, well, you could already do it too. Well, here's the thing: when you roll with this guy, I mean, you know, it, it's all mind blowing in a healing context like that. So I, yeah, I was, <laughs> I he told me what he was gonna do, and um, he did it, and I. You know, exactly what I expected happened, and it did. But was it impressive? Had I ever seen anything like that before? You never see that anywhere. I mean, that's 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 like, very, some, that's like magic. It's, it's like magic. It's, it's right? high. It's it's the highest of high level stuff. Let's put it that way. Now, when you're a chiropractor and then you leave, kind of leave. You know, half of the country thinks chiropractic is bullshit. It's just a, a reoccurring bill. What what is your opinion of chiropractic now that you're involved with the zone? Because it seems to me like it's a reoccurring bill. Everybody I know who goes to a chiropractor has to go every month or every other, every two weeks, and it's like a band aid, but doesn't correct. Well, not that that's, I. That's 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 that, a, that's, that's just a, my well, general well, peanut it, brain. Well, well, no, thing. no, that's that's I would say very accurate in the minds of many people. Um, unfortunately, this profession, the chiropractic profession, um, can't agree on anything which is what is its really downfall or, or, or its limitation into being more recognized. Um, you said they can't, they can't chiropractors agree. Chiro can't chiro agree on Chiropractors anything? can't agree on anything. Cannot. I mean, like an they example. Um, you know, what, when it comes down to it, there's many things in chiropractic that um, people will look at or debate, chiropractors, uh, you know, what is a misalignment, nerve interference, or a word called subluxation, um, what does all that mean? What is what is nerve interference? How is that affecting the body? Um, are we 
you know, in a musculoskeletal type of box. I mean, most people think of a chiropractor as somebody that treats neck and back pain or joint pain, headaches maybe, but not stuff like what we're talking about here, uh, you know, the the serious stuff, the uh, autoimmune diseases, skin conditions. Yeah, this you know, is everything. a whole nother this level. Is, it's just a whole nother level of stuff. Um, so chiropractors I, argue about how to straighten out a back? Well, they have different differencing in opinions on what is better, how it works. And here's the thing. It's, um, in my opinion, um, there's a lot of financial motivation in the profession that uh, makes it difficult for it to be cohesive. It's a very counterintuitive profession, too, because in my opinion, it's like this. If you're a doctor, your job is to get somebody better. Your job isn't to string them along and tell them, oh, they got to come in and you got to do this, that, and the other. But here's the thing. You get somebody better quickly. They don't come in. That's how you make your money. So I've always been a results guy, even before I met Pete. And that's why I resonated with him so well, because I'm not, you know, I'm not here to sell a bill of goods. You want to solve. I want to solve the problem. Because I mean, that's why you became a doctor. To when it, somebody's sick, they come in, you treat them, you solve that's it, exa- not string them for. That's exactly right. Well, well. Tommy, you know, you go to a mechanic or you go out to dinner. I mean, you go to any, any, anywhere, you know, you go out to dinner. What do you want? You want to have a nice meal. You want to leave full. You want to leave happy. You want to go to a mechanic. Something's wrong with your car. You want someone to be honest with you, diagnose the problem and fix it. You don't want to have to keep going back all the time. So, you know, you look at this stuff and you look at life and you understand things. Now, when it comes to healing, uh, getting the job done is what is most important. Getting the result. Um, I can't promise and I never do how long it's going to take someone to heal from whatever it is they're coming in for. But make no mistake, um, I don't like it when people come in repeatedly with the same issue because it makes me feel like I'm not doing a great job. So most of my patients, they come to me, um, and depending on what's happening with them, you know, we get results very quickly. When that happens, you build a lot of faith, a lot of trust, um, a lot of confidence. They have a lot of confidence in you, of course. And the reality is, is that they come back because they want to, not because you tell them to. And that's, you know, that is the difference. A lot of folks are dealt, dealing with care plans like you're talking about. You got to be here once or twice a week for, you know, six, eight weeks or eight months or the rest of your life or whatever, which is which is crazy. I mean, hey, I can't name I can name 30 people I know that go to a chiropractor. And those same 30 people have been gone for the last decade. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? They, 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 it's, it's managing stuff. It's, it's, it's selling somebody a bill of goods, in my opinion. That's just not right. Um, I don't like that. And I don't think that that is good for the profession, is good for the doctor. And more importantly, it's not good for the patient. Or the reputation. So, well, either. the reputation, yeah. of, reputation of, of everything, the profession, the doctor, and the whole thing. So all that being said, yeah, we want to get the job done and get people feeling better. It's people don't come to a chiropractor or, or really any doctor that they want uh, a history of the profession or they want an anatomy lesson. Yeah. No, nobody, nobody cares about that stuff. They just want what they're coming in for to get better. You don't go to dinner and go into the kitchen, interview the chef, want to know where the food is sourced, how it's cooked, what they're doing, blah, 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 the preparation, where they went to school, how all that works. No one cares. They just want to go in. They want to look at the menu, resonate with something that looks good, eat pay, leave, and then that's it. And that's that's how this needs to be. It's funny you say that because Dr. Malone earlier today, he said how things have changed, how where people don't even ask questions. They want to be told what to do. So just like you're saying with the chiropractic area, they want to be fixed quick and told, come back in two weeks so I can fix you again. Come back in a month. Every month you come back, I'll fix you. I'm going to tell you what to do. Instead of researching it, asking questions, they want to be told now what to do. It's actually, a, they, if I could just interject one thing, it's a very important dynamic in a doctor and a patient or a healer and a client. It's very important. And the real healing masters understand this dynamic. And I teach it in my school, in zone school, to any doctor or healer. There are some doctors or healers who tap into it inadvertently. But when you talk about the doctor, the patient, the research being told, wanting to be told what the doctor says, there's a lot of very important subtleties and um, those who understand it can produce what the world calls miracles. It's very important stuff. Most doctors, chiropractors have no clue how this works, but in zone school, it's a huge part of what I teach. And I know how you did it, but when you got into it, how did you sell it? Because this is a hard sell. 
Well, it's, I don't care what anybody says. This is a hard sell. It's hard for anybody to believe it. Well, Even after you see it, you're still like, eh. Here's, here's the thing. Your reputation precedes you in many ways when it comes down to it. Um, managing is something that most chiropractors do, and they're proud of. You know, you, hey, someone comes into you with migraine headaches five days a week. You can manage them by adjusting them once a week, and they have migraine headaches two times a week, maybe three. And you know what? You have instilled into that patient that you're a hero for basically helping them. They feel that way about you. Yeah, I think I and, paid that bill for about five yeah, years. It, well, it, and, here, and here's the thing. It's like this. For me, um, I never looked at things like that per se, but there were folks that I dealt with, I did have patients, that I wasn't unpurposely managing, but that, that was just the trend that we got into. It's kind of like a cycle where they just felt obliged, they felt comfortable, and I was fine. I mean, I was fine with it, and I felt good about it too because they felt good about you know, what I was doing with them, and that's really what I cared about. If I was making a difference in some way, shape, or form, that was okay. Um, but when I got into this work, and then I really got into it, I was like, you know, F this, we're not managing anything, we're fixing shit. And when we fix shit, if everything's better, it'll take care of itself. I don't need to tell people how they're feeling, they know. But when you get great results by what you do, they get that, they understand that, and they know, because people want this. They want a permission slip to go live their life and do what they want to do. And more importantly, they want to know that they've got somebody to come to if the bubble bursts, something happens, something out of the ordinary, that no problem, come back, we'll fix it. We've done it once, we'll do it again. That's why I tell my patients, I go, we don't live in a bubble, so go out and do whatever you want. You know, it's fine. If something happens, reoccur, you get a, tw I mean, whatever. It's not, nothing is foolproof in life. You can't control that stuff. But what you can control is the peace of mind to know when something does happen, You'll you come in there. and it's and it's and it's and it's done. And you know what? It's that's that's exactly right. But here's the other thing. Emotions rule the body. So physically, you could feel the best you've ever felt in your entire life. And then you get a phone call or you get some bad news, something happens, and it throws, you know, throws everything off. And then emotionally have, you know, these things that manifest physically, and then here we are, what's going on? So there's so many factors that go into it, but the rapport that you get when you work with somebody and when they understand what your expectations are in healing and you, know, you are in agreement with that, it's very powerful stuff. And that's you know, my patients, my ideal practice, which is you know, for the most part what I have, are folks that I've done great work with you know, for many years. And I don't see them that often and then something happens, there's, you know, or they feel like they need to come see me. They love it. And for the most part, and I've been told this many times, and I know Pete has too, hey, they'll say, when I make, make that appointment, I was feeling better already because I knew I was going to come in and see you. They know and, they're going to leave. Exactly. Correct. So before, and, and, and like I said, there's so many things that go into that, but that's the peace of mind that people want to know. And they don't want to be strung along. And this day and age, like today, 2022, even versus, you know, before when I started sewing school, or even when I was, you know, becoming a chiropractor, the dynamic of the patient has completely shifted because there's so much mistrust now in big pharma and all the other stuff that's been going on, what people will perceive as, you know, lies that they've been told, the credibility of their medical doctors, et cetera, wondering, you know, hey, is there a better way to heal? Is there a better way to do things? And that's powerful stuff. It's empowering. Not that I use it to my advantage because they can figure that out themselves, but the light bulbs are really starting to go off and understand for a lot of people. Like, you know hey, this is this important. On that note. For some, for some, because some are still on that, want to be told what to do. Well, yeah. that'll and there'll always be that way. It's nothing that's going to happen overnight, but gradually I'm seeing the pendulum yeah, starting to it. shift. Well, and what did you do? Because you got people flying to you from Malaysia, different countries. 30 different countries and cities. That's a lot. 15 out of Malaysia. Congratulations. What was it that sparked that? What well, what session, who'd you fix? What did you do where people started you know, flying from other countries? It's interesting. I had a, there's there's two different paths to knowledge. Let me reverse, it, reverse that. There's two different paths to success in this regard. One is the knowledge 
path, one is the faith path. So the knowledge path would indicate, let's say I was teaching you to be a healer, let's just say, and you, you're like, I want to do what Pete does in healing. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to teach you. And I'm giving you knowledge, 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 knowledge. And then you do what I'm doing and you get these miraculous results too. The other path is faith. You're just like, I just believe what Pete's telling me. Why, you know, and then you just kind of take my word for it and do it yourself. That's the, that's the, uh, the faith path. Either way, they lead to the same place. So when I started learning in 1993 from my mentors, I took the faith path. Of course, I took the knowledge path too. I was learning all this knowledge that I have. But I saw these amazing results and I just believe, like I, I believed I could do what they could do. No, I so, know. We, we've done that in the other interview. How did you get people to you from other countries? Okay. What was it that you did okay. that you started sparking people to fly to you from other countries, which is amazing? So, yeah, so and, and just the reason I mentioned that little part was because I was what I was kind of leading to was even early on, I was getting these miraculous results. Even at the beginning, it didn't, I didn't have to kind of become a veteran. I just, I had these results from day two, whatever. So on that note, um, I'm trying to think of the amazing he, I mean, I had people coming with every disease under the sun to me, even when I was still a student in chiropractic school and then just the word spread. Right. But what I mean is, you know, the, in everything you do, in every business, no matter what it is, whether you're on a computer, whether you're a chiropractor, whether you're a dentist, it doesn't matter. There's that one day where things are just going as usual, and then you wake up and all of a sudden, bang, it pops off. Do you know what I mean? You know, you open up your chiropractor place, whatever, you got 10 patients a day, all of a sudden, bang, you know, you're booked out three months. When you started getting into this, where, where and when was that bang? Where you woke up and you're like, whoa. You know, th this is starting to become something. Well, uh, the very when I opened my office, my very first office in New York City, very first one, I just graduated chiropractic school. Oh, it was in New York? Yeah, I opened. I went back home to New York. Where did you open it at? Across from the World Trade Center. Oh, wow. And on 9-11, the World Trade Center fell in my office. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. Yeah, the, Tell me about that. The plane oh, just missed gosh. me. He did, he's been here three times. Hasn't mentioned that. The plane, the plane just he missed me. He saw the plane. Yeah. He's fine. been in here three times, hasn't mentioned yeah. that. So tell me about that. Okay. That's well, interesting. Well, I just, just want to say that my very first patient, the very first, they carried some girl in, an eight-year-old girl. They carried her in. She couldn't walk. Something happened. She woke up. Her legs were, like, paralyzed. She couldn't walk. Then no one knew what happened. They brought her to me. I worked on her for two minutes. She walked out. That was my first patient of my career. So it just... People started coming from far and wide. They just heard about it, the results. And that happened in New York, right? In Manhattan. Not, not a, no better place for that to happen yeah. to get the word out, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I was, I was in, uh, I had an office across from the World Trade Center, and I, I saw the plane hit it, and I, I was right there, and I escaped. I, I jumped in my car, jumped in the Holland Tunnel, and went into New Jersey right before they closed it off. So you're in your office. You see the plane. You it was actually, actually in my apartment. You're in your apartment. Yeah. You see the plane hit. Yes. And then what do you do? I didn't know what it was. Then I saw the second plane hit. I said, oh, shit, we're under attack. I knew right away. And I just went down to the, and I just drove out to New Jersey. Wow, and just got the hell out of Right away. Now, when you were driving out, was it madness, craziness? No, no one knew what was going on. It was like people were like looking they up. Were like, they were like just, just in shock. They were just, no, they were just looking up like like nothing. I knew. Where were you at during 9-11? Well, it's funny. You know, kid. I was... No, I was, <laughs> I was actually on my way to the airport at the time. I was uh, living in Minneapolis. Uh, I was working for, this was before I went to chiropractic school. I was working for uh, Simmons Mattress, and we had a conference here or in, up in Atlanta. And um, I was supposed to fly on an airplane that day, and I had no idea what was going on. I got in my truck, drove to the airport, and I got to the airport. And then all these cops and everyone were like, you got to turn around and go. And I was like, well, I hadn't, and, you know, I'd never seen anything like that. So clearly they wouldn't let you in the airport. So I turned around, went back to my place, turned on the TV and saw what happened. And at that point, I'm sure, like everybody else, you think like the world's going to end. And I lived in a high rise in Minneapolis on, you know, the, the, the 22nd floor on, uh, yeah, across the street from the post office near the Metrodome. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is crazy. So, yeah, crazy crazy experience but i mean we talk and we've got a lot of folks we know a lot of folks i know a lot so does pete and i know you do too a lot of you know conspiracy theory type of folks that don't really even believe that that happened and it's so it's you know always interesting when i'm with him because someone might bring that up and he's like 
No, we, no, no, we, no, no. We were, we were I, hanging out with a guy. Yeah. Conspiracy theory. Yeah. I had the head of the Secret Service in who investigated that. 3,600 engineers he had in there. Independent report. Yeah. You know what the report concluded? What's that? Demolition. Of course. I you know, do you know what else they did? What? They changed every elevator in the World Trade Center three weeks before 9-11. The elevators were changed nine years ago. Has 30-year warranty. Every elevator was changed three weeks before. That guy there, Rick Prado, was head of the CIA. He went in 61 days before 9-11 to Bush and Rumsfeld. He said, look, the cells are quiet. They're coming on these planes. I always thought it was Bush. Rumsfeld said, no, not enough information. The head of the fucking CIA. Then the head of the Secret Service who investigates it, demolition, demolition. And after he had said that, you could see, you could see it was bothering him. You know, he had mm-hmm. seen a lot of shit. And his wife worked in Building 7, but she had been off that week. So after that, he's like, you know, I just hope I'm wrong. And, you know, he was like, I'm hope I'm wrong. And that, that was one of those things where you kind of just let it go sure. at that well, point. On Building 7, about a week after 9-11, I went back to my apartment to get some stuff. And I looked under Building 7, seven days after 9-11, and the, the, the fire guys were shooting water on it 24-7. The fire was still burning. I mean, what? Please. Yeah. 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 And then, you know what was funny is I didn't get it. When, when he said the elevator, I'm like, okay, they changed the elevators. He goes, no, they just changed them nine years ago. And I'm like, well, okay, so maybe they broke or they got a new deal. He goes, no, no. They're good for 30 years. They don't change every elevator in every building, right. you know? And then uh, we kind of let it there. Where I was, I was. <laughs> I was about to ask you where you were. <clears throat> I was driving for uh, Mannheim Auto Auction. It was exotic day. So we would take the cars from uh, Lebanon, Pennsylvania to Mannheim Auto Auction to run them through the uh, exotic car lane. And I was listening to Howard when it when it happened. I was actually in the car and we were listening to Howard Stern when it happened, which that was really a good. I was there. Yeah, you were there. Yeah, I was there. What did you think when you heard that go when that because you guys were there? I was in another studio. I ha- you know, my studio was down the hall. And I saw it first. I had I, I had a monitor or a TV, and I'm like, "This is like <laughs> they didn't even know a plane hit it. The building was just on fire, and at that point, nobody knew what happened. And then, you know, we we run into Howard in a commercial break. We go, There's something going on. He turns his TV on, and the rest is history. And I, I'll tell you what, he he was really good with that. He was, he was I've really heard, I've good. Heard a replay of that, yeah. Yeah, because I, I listened to it the, the thirty five minutes up. It was in the van with the nut old guys on the way back, and then another drive on the back up. It was crazy. Yeah, I don't think anybody will ever forget where they were at that day. Never. Well, I'll tell you one thing about that day. So I'll just fast forward a few hours later, I was already in New Jersey, and I stopped into a Walmart or Kmart had to buy something. And they had, you know, when you go to a Kmart, they have all the uh, the TVs in the TV section where they sell TVs. they got like 30 TVs. So I walked up to the TVs to watch the news coverage. Now, 30 to, TVs? Yeah, 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 <laughs> I don't yeah, know if you want to see that. Yeah, yeah, okay. you, have to, you have to understand, I where I grew up in Brooklyn, my view, like what I saw every day when I, when I was a kid, when I was a little kid until I was in high school, my view from my apartment was the World Trade Center. So I saw, I think it was built in 1973, I think. I think I saw it being built. I used to look out my window and watch it being built, I think. But I remember, yeah, actually I did. I just watched it being built. And then when it was built, I saw it every day. Come up, wake up in the morning, come home from school, go to sleep at night. There's the World Trade Center. And then, of course, I moved back to New York, opened a practice that was a few feet from the World Trade Center. So you have to understand, the World Trade Center was something that my brain was used to seeing. All your life. So I'm in the Kmart by the TVs. And that was when they fell, because it was a little while later. So by the time I got to that part of New Jersey, they fell. And, you know, something I had seen my whole life to see. And I remember, you know, people say, like, I had to pinch myself to see if I was dreaming. You know, people, it's like a saying. I had to pinch myself, see if I was dreaming. But no one really does it. You don't, you don't often pinch yourself. It's like an expression. I couldn't believe it. I won the lottery. I had to pinch myself. But when you see two no, planes so, so hanging out of a so building. I, so I'm standing in the cam- K- uh, Kmart, and I said, maybe I'm dreaming. In my head, I said, maybe I'm dreaming. I could be dreaming. So I was kind of embarrassed to start pinching myself. So I kind of looked around. It was like an empty Kmart. So I looked around. No one was near me. And I started pinching myself, started pinching my face and my arm. Am I dreaming? That's how crazy it was for me that day. 
And now when you go back and it's not there, what was that like to see it not there? For uh, some reason, that wasn't as big a deal. I mean, no. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying it's not a big deal. I'm right. saying for me, I didn't feel much, but I was there that day. I was right there. Crazy. Unbelievable. And I'll tell you something interesting. You know, when you live in a certain place, you are familiar with the sounds. Like you might have lived in Pennsylvania. You know what it sounds like in Pennsylvania. I'm born and raised in New York City. I grew up in Brooklyn. I know what New York sounds like. So about 30 seconds before it hit, I heard a plane flying incredibly low. And I know what New York sounds, that doesn't sound right. And I'm like, this doesn't sound right. And I, it just went right by me. And then it, boom, hit. And uh, that was pretty wild. The other thing about that day that I'll never forget, I guess everyone has their memories, you have to understand, like, for example, when I went to chiropractic school in Georgia, there was an Air Force base near the school. Is it still there? Yeah. Dobbins. Yeah. yeah. Yep. The Air Force base there. So, you know, sometimes you see the, pl- the the jets, the fighter jets on maneuvers. You know, it's not so odd to look up in the air in that part of Georgia and see fighter jets. But again, I'm from New York. You never see fighter jets in the air. <laughs> like, you see commercial planes way up in the air. Yeah. But you don't see fighter And I'll never forget this. I'm in New Jersey, and it was, let's say, I don't know what time it was, but it was maybe 45 minutes after they had hit because I got right out of there and I look up and I see right above me just coincidentally where I was in Newark I was in Newark and I see like six fighter jets like right above me it was like a like out of like a a movie like I was like Top Gun right Top Gun it was like fighter jets right above me and if they're fighter jets going over Newark they're going to be in Manhattan in about eight seconds at the speed they go I never forgot that that's crazy did you see anything crazy Scott? No, like when was, you left that day? I, well, no, I, I didn't. Everything was close. I didn't get out of there and out of Manhattan until like one thirty. We were on the air all, all 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 morning, and so I didn't, you know. But I had to go to Jersey, where I was leaving living at the time. I had to go all the way upstate to get across the Tappan Zee. I couldn't get across all the tunnels, bridges. Everything was closed. That was how long was that drive? Oh, it had to be like uh, that's forever. <laughs> Is that forever? <laughs> that day, that day. Oh. No, no. At that point, the roads were pretty empty. Oh, really? Believe it or not, it was like once everybody like oh, scattered. Okay. Yeah. So, because Manhattan was like barren when I left, yeah. barren. I mean, I've never seen it until COVID like that. So we drove up, and it probably took about an hour and a half. By the way, when I went back to my apartment, when I said I looked at the fire at Building Seven, this was also a little surreal. So a week later. The area was closed off. I showed my driver's license with my address so they would let me in. Who escorted me in? Who escorted me through, like, the closed-off area? It wasn't an NYPD. It was the U.S. Army. Some guy, like, he looked like he was in Iraq, like he in a war. Like, he had all the freaking, he might as well have had a bazooka on his <laughs> He took me up to my apartment. It was wow. Wild. In Manhattan. Yeah. yeah. Never saw that before no. either, right? Where did you go to school, Nate? Or college, I mean. Well, I went to uh, undergrad uh, at a school called private school called Bradley University, which is uh, two and a half two and a half hours south of Chicago. And then, uh, and I was a communications major. Radio, TV was my uh, focus. And then I got out, got into sales, and did that for a little while. And I actually uh, moved to Seattle, and I was living in downtown Seattle. Um, and my next door neighbor was a chiropractor. And I'll tell you something. I grew up, um, you know, not knowing what chiropractic was. He was the first chiropractor I'd ever met in my life. I didn't know, any, I didn't know anything about chiropractic. But this guy and I, we hit it off. We had a great relationship. I was like, this, he was terrific, big influence. And he told me, he's like, you know, you'd be a great chiropractor. You've got a great way with people. You could really do stuff to help, you know, folks with a variety of things, you know, through chiropractic. And I, you know, once again, I grew up. On Diet Coke and Fruit Loops, uh, Captain <laughs> yeah, we were Crunch. We're talking about that. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I didn't grow up like organic was could, could have been a swear word in my house, or or actually not even a swear word, a word that like nobody even knew what it meant. Like, <laughs> Another you know, language. Or, organic, yeah, exactly. It's like yeah, exactly. It could be it could have been anything, you know. So, um, <laughs> it, so you know. It, but that being said, um, I decided I was I was in the furniture business at the time, and I decided to, you know, retool my path and um, left downtown Seattle. And uh, 
I was doing really well in my early 20s um, and was living a great life. And then I moved to Marietta, Georgia to take <laughs> undergraduate classes uh, at Life College so I could get into uh, the chiropractic program. How was so that, buddy? It was it was a f- <laughs> it, was, it was it was it was a lot of long days and even longer <laughs> nights because I was trying to check my check my head. I'll never forget. I told my dad. I said to him, I said, Dad, I, I was living in Seattle. I go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave, and I'm gonna go go to school and become a chiropractor. And he said to me, um, Nate, are, are you sure that's a good decision? And I said, Well, you know, time will tell. And then he's like, What's a chiropractor? And I, and I, <laughs> I said, I said, I'll tell you about it. So, but make no mistake, it was a, it was a long road. Uh, it was a road less traveled. I mean, make. <laughs> I got to chiropractic school. I didn't know the difference between a humerus and a femur. I mean, I had no clue what was going on. I just went because I was like, I'm going to be able to do this, learn this, be proficient at it. So I did. Uh, so I went to life in Marietta where Pete went, although it was, you know, several years later. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I, I made my way through it and then, uh, you know, start decided to stay. So I stayed in Atlanta and have been, you know, practicing uh, in the area there ever since. Were you happy? To, were you happy to get out of that college? <laughs> oh my God! I still have nightmares about that college. You know, I have I have this reoccurring n- I night. The, I use the term college loosely. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. School or, or whatever. Yeah, whatever you want to call. It. But yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was a, it was it was a nightmare. I have this reoccurring nightmare that like I, I I I I'm still I'm still like a credit or two away from getting through, and like you know that like I missed that last class where like I. Never attended one of the classes that <laughs> I was supposed, to, and I'm like, I'm like, I gotta go. I gotta get this like this memo, like, hey, you know, you, you know, we, we're on to you now. You know, here we I are. Used to have that dream sometimes. I haven't. It's been a while. But was like, that I, bad for you? Too? No, it was just like I, I had a test the next day and study for or something like that. Sounds like chiropractic school was not fun for not fun. anyone. No, well, I, <laughs> look, look at their not. faces; they're like miserable. It was, it was, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was horrible on <laughs> on, on, on many levels, um, and you know. What was the most difficult thing about going, and, and I know you agree with me, and I was told this too, was, you know, when you are about to embark on something like that, and you were told, and we were both told the same thing, that you just need to get through it, and then it's fine. Not like, oh, you're going to love it. Oh, you're going to enjoy the process. <laughs> oh, you're going to learn so much. You're going to be a better person. This is going to really give you the tools you need to be successful. It's just like, no. You just need to go it's like a four-year bite, sentence. Bite your exactly. It's like it's like yeah, it's get like, through it. Just... Bite your tongue and just go through it, and then you know do the best you can. And then once you're out, you know do whatever you know you do what you want with it. So you know going in there, but yeah, I mean for me it was tough because I had to go take six months of undergrad accelerated undergrad <laughs> classes before I even went. And and listen, I'm not you know the best student. That's why my dad was just like you know. Are you're you going crazy? back. He's like, you're going back to school. He's like, are you sure? That's. I mean, is that even you know? Is lo- that a good idea? He's like, he's like, he's like, is that logical? And I was like, you know, well, probably, probably not. But you know, we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, but no, I'll uh, I, I'll I'll never uh, I'll never forget it because I got there and um, my first <laughs> my first class I had to take this accelerated biology class just to get into the school in order to take the car. So I get into this class and I'm there and I have to go for. You know, it was like four hours, you know, in the morning. And then I had a chemistry class for like, you know, three hours after that or whatever. So I go to this biology class for the first time. Tommy wants to roll. He he inspired Tommy. He wants to go there. Hell no. So I was with accelerated chemistry. So I go there. It's like a six-week accelerated (laughs) class. You're there. So I go there and I fail the first. I fail the first class. So (laughs) then I go, I go, okay, fuck. I'm like, I failed this class. Now, you you know, so then I had to go to. So then I had to go to the community college to do night school as well. So then I'm going to the community college. And mind you, like, I've heard, I mean, I'm like, you know, 20, 24, 25 years old. I'm like in with all these 18-year-olds going to this technical school, going to get this accelerated class while I'm also at the other school. So I'm, I'm like in class all day. I'm like, you know, not, I won't say I'm the worst student, but, you know, I was definitely not enthused or interested in organic chemistry, physics, and all this. I mean, so it was... Uh, it was it was a real test. Let's put it that way, and uh, you know it all worked out. But yeah, there was. Tell about Doctor Lou. Oh my well, god! What was that? What, what was that? What was that oh my god! That was uh... anatomy. <laughs> so so this, this is geez, this is geez. now he's got through the prerequisites. Now he's in the what's called the uh, Doctor yeah. of Chiropractic program. Well, t- I, when I went to when I went there, this particular doctor professor was not there. But when he wasn't tell, there, he wasn't there much longer. When, when they tell the story, it well, sounds like I missed out. Oh Dr. my god! Blue. Well, this, yeah, geez, Chinese guy. Well, right? Chinese? Yeah, oh yeah, he's Chinese, Chinese, Chinese guy. Yeah. Well, Tommy, let's put it this way: when I went to chiropractic school, I had a knack for getting to know my teachers, uh, and and you know, really 
playing the role of being a good student and giving it my best by showing up and being, you know, present, responsible. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, trying my best. Um, you know, I took took my shots, but um, there was this one. We have this lab, as a dissection lab, where you. So you know, some, just to clear, be yeah. clear, sometimes uh, the classes are like in a classroom. And sometimes yeah. they have like a laboratory which goes with the class. So you go to the class, but then they also have a lab section. So this is his lab teacher for it was it anatomy, right? It was anatomy, yeah. So there's you know, so you have a lab where you go in and they have real you know human corpses, corpses you know, you dissect, that you have to go you dissect uh, corpses. They go and yeah, and you and you like dead bodies, dead, dead bodies, bodies yeah. like real dead bodies that you dissect. And like here's the thing, so <laughs> I go in there, I go, I go in there, and I'm like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. You shit. know that there's going to be dead bodies wherever you're going to do this. Well, well, well the problem I, is you smell like the freaking formaldehyde. formaldehyde. It was so yeah, seriously. Like, you're like well, you go in the shower, you smell like that for like a week. So I get a, I get this lab coat. I buy this big white lab coat, and then I have a and I still have it. It's hilarious. It's a, it's a great Halloween costume actually. I have a skull like a skull patch, and I take it to a seamstress, and I have it sewed on there. So I have this like you know it looks like a, a you know it's like, a, like a biker would put on their jacket. You know I have this like big skull thing on there. So I go in there and I'm like you know mess around this uh, Chinese lab teacher dr lu he uh took a real liking to me and it was it was absolutely you know looking back on it, it was hysterical so i build this like great rapport with this guy because listen we're cutting up these bodies we're looking at this stuff and i'm just like what the fuck is this like I, i'm like i'm like we're looking at like we're, we're, we're looking at like spaghetti string like nerves and you know artery artery well you veins. take these you take these tests right and they like open up these bodies and they've got these little markers you're looking at like a plate of spaghetti and you're like you know every fourth noodle you have to tell what what that noodle is and where it goes and you know and i'm just like what the fuck is this you know so i end up be i end up becoming like buddies with this guy and um you know <laughs> he i take a lab class with him like 7 a.m in the morning because that's when he taught it and this guy was a fucking character. So he had my cell phone. He actually gave me a key to the lab room so I could open it up. And he used to call me or text me and be like, you know, Nate, you know, late, you know, running late, you know, just so I'd open up the, you know, open up the library, but come in there and, you know, it was absolutely hysterical. So I'm like, you know, take, I'm like, he's like, you know, facilitating kind of everybody to kind of, cause it was, you know, everyone's just like mind blown by what's going on. Um, <laughs> so, but, but, uh, and I'll tell the, the rest, I don't want to get into too many details because I don't want to have that. Watching. I don't want to have that nightmare that yeah. you know I've had. I want to hear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. About when Doctor uh, Lou met you and well, Seattle that well, or... that that's so. So anyway, so so I finished. So I so I'm about done with his class. Well, this is the best story. So I used to, you know, I, I moved from Seattle to Atlanta, and my buddy was a chiropractor there, um, and I used to go on my breaks to Seattle or like whatever, you know, whenever we had time off, I used to go up there and visit him. And Doctor Lou, living in Atlanta, had uh, family. Chinese family up in like Tacoma or whatever <laughs> and uh this one you know we text and he's like I'm gonna be up there I'm, you know blah 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 like let's get together so I'm like all right cool so I text him he comes and actually meets me out you know for drinks with my buddy and a few other people at this bar Dr. Lou does, Dr. Lou does from Atlanta Shit. yeah yeah so 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 he comes and he's this guy's this guy he's the kind of guy like he, he would like uh take a shower at night and his hair would be wet and he'd go to sleep and he'd wake up and his hair would be like looking like it does, you know, like all over the place. And like, he didn't give a shit. So like, that's like what he looked like. That was like his hairstyle. It was like total shot, mess, total mess, total mess. So, you know, I tell my buddy, I'm like, you're not gonna believe this, but my anatomy lab teacher is gonna, you know, come over and have a drink with us. And he's like, you gotta be kidding me. And I'm like, no, but this guy is a riot and he is a riot. He's got, you know, so this guy comes, he gets, long story short, he gets so fucked up, okay? And we're at this bar, and I'm just getting him hammered. And he's slurring his words and going on and on. And my buddy is just going, he's just laughing his ass off. And I'm, I'm like, you know, okay, like the bar is closing. And I'm like, what am I going to do with this guy? So I'm like, you know, <laughs> I, I call, we call, hail down a cab. We throw him in the cab. And the cab driver's like, where am I taking him? And I'm like, and he's like basically unconscious. He's, he's <laughs> can't even fucking communicate. So and I'm like, and I'm like, where am I taking you? And he's like, he's like, does he have an ID? Does he have Tacoma. an ID? Do I go? Does he have an ID? So I'm like going through his pockets. I find his ID, and his ID is from Georgia. And I'm like, well, we're not driving him all the way back to fucking Atlanta. So I'm like, where are you staying? So I'm like, you know, I'm trying to like get this guy sobered up to like find out where I can tell the cab driver to take him. Do you speak Mandarin or yeah, Japanese? Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. I'm just, you know. So anyway, like I got, I, I, we like pulled it out of him, and then I'm like, I throw him in the cab, and I'm like, you know, see you on Tuesday, and uh, you know, then we go back to Atlanta, you know, on Tuesday morning, and he looks at me first thing at like, you know, 7 a.m. in the morning, he's like, you know, what the f- what the fuck happened to me, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm surprised you made it back. I'm glad you made it back to you know Tacoma or where the fuck you were going, you know. But this guy, he. Um, and there were a few teachers there that took care of me. I mean, it was it was, it was a good situation for me to be in because I was really able to use my. Um, so it sounds like you used your media and like your broadcasting skills that you had learned I, earlier to kind of I, I, persuade know, people to like. I'm you. a good I'm a good people person, and yeah. you know what? I, I bring people together, and we have a good time with things. And yeah, I mean, without being too incriminating, I mean, I got through school and it was fine. And there were, you know, quite a few hilarious stories. And I'm, you know. We all have our stories, but uh, you don't have a lot of Georgia police officers to watch us right now. Yeah. yeah, right. No, but uh, everything was legal. There's no doubt about it, and, and it was all honest for sure. But uh, would you put you him know, in his drink, Nate? Yeah, right. Right. Well, I was in Seattle, so I'm not too worried about it. No, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was. He was just. He. He was. He was doing his own thing. But make no mistake, it was like you know, hanging out with my lab teacher, who like happened to be like you know, buddies with, I guess. And you know, next thing you know, we're we're, we're going through that, and and the look on everybody's face. When he came back, when we met back in Atlanta, and he comes in, and um, and I'm just like, look at this guy, because I had a couple good buddies in the class, and I'm like telling the story, and they're like, no fucking way, you didn't go, and you weren't just in Seattle. I mean, they knew I was there, but they're, you weren't like partying with this guy. He walks in, and then he starts kind of like telling. How, how his, was his hair that day? Oh, the same, always. He probably didn't. He probably hadn't showered even since I saw him that night. He was a mess. <laughs> Since and the cab, uh, since the yeah, cab ride, yeah, the cab ride, yeah, exactly. I, I, I actually, I asked him, did the cab drive you from Seattle to Atlanta? He's like just passed out in the back for the last two days or whatever. How long it took? <laughs> but it was, you know, it was, it was so unbelievable and just so hysterical. It was kind of a microcosm of my experience in chiropractic school. Um, but I've had uh, in my career, and like I, was, you know, like I tell Pete, and Pete knows this. You know, I'm blessed because I work um, and have only worked with people that I have great relationships with. I mean, you know, in my office, my my mentors, the folks that I, I deal with, they are, you know, my close friends. It's not work, it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's a bond. We really care, be there for each other. I'm blessed to have that because, you know, work is tough at doing stuff, but when you have like relationships with people that really care about you, about your well-being, about, you know, you as a person, not just as you, the doctor or whatever else, it goes a long way. And, you know, you have a lot more pride in everything that goes on around you and you're accountable. And I'm just, you know, for, I'm a huge accountability person. Like I, you know, I want to always be accountable to everybody and be accountable to me. And I feel like I never want to disappoint anybody on any, you know, front. And we all hold ourselves to a high standard. And that's, you know, that's the kind of stuff in life that I think really makes you tick. And when you have great people around you um, that care about you, respect you, and you them, you guys all hold each other accountable. I mean, it's great. It goes a long way. Because it's like a family, right? Yeah. So if you have someone who's sick or you're going through something, everybody that you're working with cares about you. You care about them. You, You guys are all there for each other. So then... When you work with a patient or you're working together on a patient, the result comes out a hundred times better because you both have that bond. Like I've said before, if a doctor cares about their patient, really cares, really cares, and is very competent. They're not going to give them the runaround. You're pretty much home free. Everyone, the doctor and the patient. If you really care about people, really care, um, you don't want them to suffer anymore, and you really know what you're doing, it's a fantastic combination. What percentage of doctors in the United States do you think really care? Well, I'll put it like Seriously. this. I, I don't know, but what percentage of doctors care and are competent? Incredibly low. Again, a lot of, chiro- a lot of chiropractors care. A, a lot don't. But plenty of chiropractors do care about their patient. But they're incompetent. How do I know they're incompetent? Because they have mediocre results. What do I mean by mediocre results? I mean on a musculoskeletal level, neck and back pain, they get decent results. And on a systemic level, um, organic, things like that, they don't know where to start unless they're in zone school, for, probably with a couple exceptions. I can't speak for MDs, but again, that combination is rare. And when people join zone school, hopefully the people who join zone school do care about their patients, and then I make them, and then I make them competent. And then when you met Nate, what was it? Because you were already doing this. Mm -hmm. You had already known this. You were already sticking needles through people, all kinds of crazy shit. Mm -hmm. What was it about Nate 
that <clears throat> you were willing to bring him on well, board. I saw, that, I saw that Nate was sincere and he was responsible and he was honest. That was good enough for me to start. What did Nate do that you saw that? Well, I'm pretty intuitive. I could, you don't have to do anything. I talked to him, I could tell. You could tell right yeah. away. Yeah. Just body language, so on and so forth. Yeah. You could read him. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting how things just yeah. fall into place. And right? I also knew that he, he uh, was able to. I knew he was able to see a lot of things in a patient, but he didn't know how to process it. Like he saw the stuff, he just didn't have the tools. I mean, I'm sure he was doing fine in many ways before he met me, but he, I could see that he saw a lot in a patient on a deeper level, but he wasn't exactly sure what to make of it, but I knew I could teach him what to make of it and then use that knowledge to get amazing results. Or did he sell you on the Dr. Lou story? Dr. Lou story, <clears throat> great, but was another story. That, that might have sold me. No, 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 actually, I'll tell you the story that sold me. Remember he said that he liked to work with... Uh, he likes to he likes to work with people that he cares about and like you said like a family. So, you know, even before he met me years ago, he started working with a guy named named Dr. Larry, a really nice guy. He's been practicing for like 45, 40 years, something like that. He's Forever. older, yeah. And uh, this guy's a real character. Not in my school, you know. He's he's come to some of my seminars, but you know, he's not really a disciple of mine. Put it that way. Um, but he's good on his own. And um, one time he delivered a baby in the parking lot. So when Nate told me the Larry delivering the baby in the parking lot story, I was so amazed and fascinated and laughing my ass off throughout that 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 was that was the one that told me that Dr. Lou. And and then and then well even to take on the next so I tell him that story and that's all great and then when uh, Pete came in for a seminar in Atlanta it was it was just great. So like you know right before things you know like lockdown or or whatever Pete comes in to teach a seminar and I pick him up and he goes you know all I really, you know, we got these, but I just need to get a haircut before we do the seminar, you know. And there's, there's no, there's no, there's like, not a like fucking a lockdown. There's, there's everything's nothing's closed. open. There's nothing open. So I go, you know what? I go, let's let's go to the office. So I go to the office, and um, we walk in, and I go, you know, I introduce him to Larry. It was the first time he met Larry. I go, hey, Larry, I'm like, um, you know, you think of Pete a haircut? And he goes, sure. So he goes, <laughs> he's like, there was a, he's like, take your shirt. It was brought to you by Fiji. More than just water. This is not just rock. It's ancient volcanic rock that filters tropical rain, giving it double the electrolytes and its signature soft, smooth taste. It's not just water. It's Fiji water. This episode is sponsored by Aurora. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is? For years, this crime rate has been surging and affecting millions of Americans. I'm talking about identity theft, and there's a new victim every 14 seconds. Yet despite this, those who have had their identity stolen are often shocked when it happens. That's why I'm excited to partner with Aurora, who is sponsoring this video. Aurora is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all into one easy-to-use app. Their VPN allows you to stay anonymous online by keeping your browsing history and personal information safe and encrypted. Protect you and your family from America's fastest growing crime. Try Aurora for free for two weeks and see if you or anyone in your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your free trial today. Go to aurora.com slash MSCS. The link is in the description below. He goes, take your shirt he, he off. Put your head over the garbage can. It just yeah. like shaves my head. He <laughs> a set of clippers, so he's giving, him a, he's giving him a haircut in the waiting room of the office, you know, as... Things were obviously slow at that time because everybody was in panic mode. He comes in, gives Pete a haircut, tightens him up. And we the all... best thing is the next day I'm teaching and Larry came to my seminar and he whispers to me, look at that masterpiece. Look at Pete's yeah, yeah, look yeah. That masterpiece. <laughs> look at his neck. It's look at that neck. neck. Yeah, yeah. This guy, masterpiece. This guy's, this guy's been in practice since like 1979, 1980. I mean, he's, he's a complete character. The guy delivered, delivered a baby. Uh, a delivered lot. a baby in a parking lot. I mean, he's, he's, a, ma he's a complete maniac. He's, he's the guy... That taught me, like, you know, you don't need to be afraid of anything in practice. You just go with your gut and do what you need to do. And he was, you know, and I've been working with, I'd known him for a long time, been in cahoots with him for quite, quite some time before I met Pete. And then, you know, Pete took that ambition and, you know, helped polish me up quite a bit and obviously gave me a mechanism to see things out of a different lens and really take that, extract that and then run with it and go to the next level. And um, I mean, yeah, you know, you can't have enough people in your life that love you unconditionally, that look at you, you know, like that, that you can have fun with and kid around 
and that's you know that's what it is like we don't in that office we don't take ourselves too seriously uh, you know, we're there for a reason, but I mean, you know, we have a good time while they we're take, there. They take the healing seriously, of course, but they don't take themselves too seriously, right. which is important. And also, yeah. the other thing is, you know, Tommy, like for example, like you run, you run this business, this business right here. So when you wake up in the morning, you think about this business before you go to sleep at night. You think about this business, but you may you may hire someone. I don't know. Some let's just pretend you hired a marketing firm, even though even though you hire them and you pay them. And they may they may even be doing a good job. They're not thinking of your business when they wake up. They're thinking about other things. But then they a lot sometimes. But I knew Nate would think about Zolan School when he woke up. I knew Nate would take it um, more than seriously. But I knew it would mean a lot to him. So that's another answer to your question. Did you know about the drive he had? You know that he went to school. You know, failed the first class. Took night, day, afternoon. I didn't know the fucking twenty four hours of school that he that sucked <laughs> those those details have you know obviously come, come out, out later yeah. over the years but i mean it was interesting like today uh you know we had lunch with my dad which was great my dad lives you know not too far from here so he drove he picked us up we went out for lunch and had a hilarious lunch and you know i've gotten to know like you know jeff and you know lloyd these folks at pete's grown up you know and um, know his mom uh, you know so many interests you get to know somebody and you work with somebody and you become like you know, like family, like, you know, like I, I treat, you know, zone school, zone technique, you know, in the business perspective, like it's my own. I mean, the success of it is, you know, that's re very rewarding to me. And when things don't work, you know, it upsets me, but it's not, you know, it's it, whatever in, in a, in a context, I should say. But yeah, I mean, you know, when you treat things like your own and you look at, you know, what you're doing as, and take it extremely seriously, yeah, that stuff's hard. I, I mean, it's hard to find because I know I have employees that work for, I mean, you know, no one gives a shit at the end of the day. If they're not paid, if they're not, you know, but when it comes down to it, when you look at things, you understand it and you really look at it at the highest level and, and treat it as your own, it's a game changer. It's it's a difference. And that's, that's for me how I've been successful in my life because I'll do something going 100%, but the relationship is the underlying tone. I mean, if I if we didn't get along and we didn't have a great friendship and a great bond, I forget mean, it, forget it. about it. It would it, 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 be it'd be nothing. But that whole dynamic has what has been, you know, a, I would say a ma major catalyst to a lot of the successes we have, and what makes it, you know, hilarious at times. And also, too, I mean, you know, we're, we're very constructive, and you know, I think we're both pretty smart, and, and, and we complement each other well. So it's been. It's been a great ride, and it's only getting better, and we're, we have a great time with it. I can relate to that because, <clears throat> like Rob, I can't replace Rob. I can't replace Scott. I get along with Scott. He's dependable. You know, if there's something wrong with me, he'll text me. If he doesn't hear from me, I'll text him. We have a good relationship. Forget about Scott from Howard. I could care less. Right. It's I, We get me, along. Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I know you could. <laughs> you, you'd like a little <laughs> so bit I of an eraser on that one. Yeah, man. <laughs> But, you know, when you when I come in with Scott or I come in with Rob, I know it's going to be good. You know, maybe it's the wrong thing on a Mac because he's been on a Windows for 37 gazillion years. You know, it's a tough transition. But even with that, I know he'll be here. We have a good rapport. You know, he's not going to fuck me. I'm not going to fuck him. And if you don't have that, it doesn't matter if he's Scott from Howard or, you know, whatever huge thing. If you don't have the rapport, it won't work. It just won't. Well, and that's, and you know, it's very important too, like in my role, which I take extremely seriously in what we do, you know, Pete's been doing this work since the early 90s. This isn't something that, you know, he's just taken on over the last few years, like everybody else who joined the school, which started, you know, about five years ago. So for me, you know, I'm a, a great liaison to the people that join the school that they're gonna understand what is going on? What are these trials and tribulations that I'm dealing with? The transition of the practice. How do I go from what I was doing, like you said, or kind of selling a bill of goods of, of, of what I believed before and now transitioning to a new way? How can I do that smoothly? And, you know, those type of things that I have been through myself and that I also can see at a very high level for other people have, have been fantastic because his job is to focus on teaching people how to heal, not necessarily how to like, you know, integrate into their practice in specific scenarios. Although, you know, there are opportunities within zone school that, you know, people can do that by doing, you know, one on one calls and stuff like that. But overall, you know, for the for the general, you know, the general public in the zone school, the, the, the composition of the students, having that person that 
is doing that, done that, seen that, knows what that's like on a you know level of yeah. I mean, I just picked this up and you know it, it's the successful transition. It it's a difference maker. The one thing I've noticed <clears throat> about you two and Peter McCullough, who is the top cardiologist in the world, not the country, the world, and Dr. Malone, who has had more vaccines patented than any other vaccine knowledge. I think it was like over a hundred vaccines he's completely done like correctly other than the COVID one because he got bad shit. And the one thing I've noticed about you two and those two top of the top, they care. They don't care about the money. They don't care about, you know, you need money to live, but they're not doing it for money. They care. And if they don't solve a problem, they, that's their whole thing. So when you see a Macala, he doesn't go on a fucking podcast, a Dr. Malone, guy makes vaccines he doesn't go on a fucking podcast so when they come out on a podcast then you know those are two doctors fuck you know they'll go against the grain why because they care they're not in it for the kickback they're not in it to go along with the grain and not piss another doctor off that wrote a paper that is no longer valid now with new technology these two guys care so being that the other doctors are too afraid or paid off or whatever it may be, they come out in the public. Malone gets his life threatened. McCullough gets his uh, license suspended, then held, you know, all this bullshit, fined for a quarter of a million just for coming out because they care. And they don't give a fuck. And they're still coming out. And I see that in used to guys too. Well, actually, when one of the things I love about Zone School is when I have a member of Zone School, a doc, tell me, Pete, I practiced for X amount of years. Now I'm doing things I never could have done. You, you, you changed my life. You changed my career. I'm so motivated to go to work every day. I help people I never could have helped before. I love that. I can never hear that enough. I, it's one of the best parts of my day, and I hear it almost every day. Love that. So we won't say his name, but I sent a friend of mine to you. Mm -hmm. He was going to get two hips done, and he had all kinds of but, see, but stuff banged up. Nine things <clears throat> wrong with him. What all was wrong? What all did you find wrong? I think, well, I let him tell me. I think it was, I wrote it down because he was talking <laughs> at the time, and I, I think it was um, elbow, elbows, wrists, shoulders, neck. He couldn't go like this without his arms tingling and going numb. Um, hips low back, sleep, eyes. I think I got them all. I think I listed them all. Not much left. And, uh, Sounds like my we, list. We, <laughs> you come, come, come see me for a week. I will. And I we, told him. We, we, um, we worked, I think it was five days in a row, and we did a lot. And listen, the last day, I just, I just took out a paper. I said, okay. And I said, let's go one by one. You tell me. I said, I'm gonna, I'm, I said, I'm going to list the, we'll say it was 11 things. I don't know. Let's list the 11 things you came in for. Just tell me what percent each one is better. We've only been together for five days. And I think, you know, some were 90, some were 100. Uh, I think there were two things that were like 40. So there were two things that we definitely dented, but needed a little more work. But there were like nine or eight or seven, whatever it was that we fixed or were 90 to 100%. So how were the hips? How did the hips end up? I think the hips were pretty good. Were they in, yeah. were they the forty percent one of the 40%? no I think the, I think the forty percent was um I think it was his wrist and um his low back just to the touch if you touch his low back was very delicate and it was still a little delicate but I mean we knocked off like eighty percent of it yeah in five days and how beat up was he compared to some others that you well, I've I've seen, seen I've seen it all so I mean. You know, like, like, would that be in the top ten? No, no. I've seen people come in and be half dead. Yeah, we put them back together. <laughs> well, that's good to know, right? I mean, another five days. That guy. I mean, were you, were you there for that? I was not, but I mean, talk to. It's a very limited sample size. I mean, five days. I mean, come on, give me yeah. a break. Guy goes for another five days. I mean, it's. <laughs> there's no. There's no doubt. There's no doubt about it. it it's. But my thing is, you know, I tell people like. I'm all for before and afters. Like, I don't need philosophy, theory. I'm just strict before and after. If someone tells me, Pete, I used to be able, I used to, be able to do 50 push-ups. Now I can't do any. Like, my shit, let's say, I'm just making this up. My shoulder is so bad, they say. I used to be able to, you know, do 50 push-ups. I can't, I can't even do one. Okay, well, let me do what I do, get on the floor. I mean, we're going to find out right now. You know what I'm saying? In fact, I was, oh, you were there. I taught a seminar in San Diego once. This very nice guy, his name is uh, Jamie, really nice guy. 
He's a chiropractor in Minnesota, but he flew to San Diego for that. And that happened. He said, you know, he's, he's um, I believe he's a CrossFit competitor. So like he was doing like 100 push-ups, whatever. He couldn't do any. He hurt his shoulder. He said, I'm going to fix this guy right now in front of everybody. And he's a chiropractor. He gets adjusted once a week. Did it. He knocked off 50 push-ups. You were there. I was there. He, went, he could do zero push-ups. Then I did what I did. He could do 50. I mean, so the person who has migraine headaches seven days a week, you know, they're with me th for three weeks. Now they have a head that feels perfect, 24-7, 365. What is there to talk about? Um, or someone who has a terrible digestion. Let's just say someone has no app. But, oh, actually, I had that recently. Woman, woman flew to me. It's on the Instagram. I, put, I posted a video. Um, the te her little testimonial. She had a sour stomach. She had headaches. She had sciatica for 10 years. So again, sciatica down both legs for 10 years, sour stomach, no appetite, terrible digestion, and migraine headaches. 10 years, seven days a week, migraine headaches, terrible sciatica. She was there for six days or whatever. Sciatica gone, headaches gone, eating big steak dinners. What is there to talk about? Someone's like, I don't believe. You believe whatever you want. I mean, this is not a belief the job's thing. Done. This is not a belief thing. Yeah, the job's done. Right, someone says, how could, wait, a chiropractor fixed her digestion? Yeah, we did. Like, well, there's nothing to talk, I mean. Maybe you should lose the chiropractor. Uh, fine with me. <laughs> I, 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 I could care less Look, about that Looks like word. both of you are okay with that. I care less about that word. I just <laughs> went to chiropractic school. Now, what were you uh, in Orlando for? You were, you were doing a conference, right? Um, Lauder, Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. I thought it was one. Yeah, I taught a yeah, I taught a seminar and you know just one of these live events of Zone School. Taught it in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Had a good time. Had some uh, you know very happy people there. And again, just like the results with the clients, it's you know when when people come, listen, a chiropractor they come or or another doctor or healer who comes, they've gone to school, they've taken other courses. You know they know certain things. They have certain knowledge of healing. And they just spend one day there. They go, I never heard anything like this. I never heard, no, nowhere. I didn't read a book about this. I didn't go to another seminar. I was, I was not aware of this stuff. They're hearing information that makes the information they formerly were relying on be like kindergarten. So technically, and this is for both of you guys, do you need to be a chiropractor to be in no, zone school? No. You do, could just be a high school degree. Well, in well here's the thing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a two-part answer. Part one of the answer is, who is eligible to join zone school? Chiropractors, medical doctors, naturopaths, acupuncturists, Reiki masters, which is kind of like an energy healing. Any doctor or healer is eligible to join zone school. So that's just, that can happen. But it's funny, every time I come in here, Tommy says to me, see, it's funny, he's probably gonna change the lives of millions. Tommy always says, Pete, you should just kind of let like lay people in, like why? And I probably should. I should just figure out a way to alter it a little bit, you know, have a separate thing for lay people who just want to learn about healing and things like that. I should probably do that. I, I say that because I, I think it's a way to get it out more. I agree. <clears throat> you know, when you just do it with the doctors, you know, they'll buy it because they'll see it. But if you just get the the regular person, you know, you just get a thousand people to come of the regular person and do some crazy shit like with that needle, they'll go tell... 10,000 other people. And those 10,000 people will tell another 10,000 people. Or we could just tell Tony to promote it. Either one. If I could tell Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I have a good idea, if Tommy doesn't mind. So anyone who's watching this, and you are not a, let's say you are not a doctor, or a, you are not a doctor or a healer of any type. You're a lay person who wants to learn more about healing. If it's okay, send an email to support at zonetechnique.com support at zonetechnique.com. And just in the subject line, just put um, lay person's course, lay person's course. You don't even have to write anything in the email. And then I'll have my assistant say, Pete, we got, we got 700 emails. I'll make a course. For them. Bang, make a course. And then I will email them back and say, we have a course and they could take it. And, and you know what, I will, I will say this, just to interject real quick. Going to a live event, that he's there and teaching because you know the zone school is online and, and and it's great online and we've got people that have never been to a live event that are doing amazing things no doubt about it but the vibration of being in that room um with all these healers and this high level healing knowledge it's there's nothing you know when we alluded to the las vegas seminar that i went to i mean 
I tell everybody that that seminar changed my life in how I look at things, how I see things. And there were so many light bulbs in my brain that went off at that seminar. I was just, you know, just captivated by everything that went on with it. And I'd never experienced anything like that before with that combination of, you know, the, the him teaching all this wonderful stuff, the energy in the room, the doctors, the fascination. I mean, it was just, it was incredible. And, you know, we've talked about that doing, you know, like a live event lay person's course where he could, you know, teach several, you know, as many people as would want to come on how to do these kind of things, you know, on a little bit more of a toned down level. <clears throat> because is, if, if you do it online, you already know what's going to happen, right? They're going to think that you're pulling some trick right. through the virtual lot, bullshit. I, I agree. I mean, there's all that's it, what I was. It, it's a lot. Well, there's, you know, it's a lot more legit when you're there and you see it. Like I told you earlier, like that first seminar, I'm like, I just saw, you know, a guy that was, you know, pretty much blind see and, and another guy that could hardly hear, you know, deaf. He's hearing, you know, so you, you could say that stuff loosely. But you're like, ah, give me a break, you know. Like, it, but when you're there and you're in that moment and you're in that vibration, that's the stuff that people take away from, and they're like, wow, this this is the real deal. And even if they go and pick up on a nugget or something, nugget or two or three, that will change the way they look at things, that change their life. Um, and you don't have to be a high level healer, have some crazy degree or whatnot to be able to do that. Um, it, you know, it work for yourself, for your family members, for people you care about. I mean, if you have a passion for something, you shouldn't have to go to, you know, chiropractic school or, 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 you know, Reiki master school or whatever it is to be able to figure out how to bestow that upon people that you want to do. You should be able to do it, but in a way that makes sense that, you know, you but can do. See, uh, again, and I'm just, I always try to help Pete just with marketing because that's, yeah. what i do you know what i mean sure. this is just something that happened this whole podcasting marketing is what i do pete you know that and if somebody sees what you do virtual you know what they do they, maybe they watch it they watch your podcast they see you on a pod they watch it they go hey sky you see this guy he put this needle through the neck i don't know if that was a real neck or not you know you bullshit and you talk about it you go to the bar with your buddies but you don't take it serious because it's online but if you go to an event and you see a needle, and you poke it at yourself, you know, or something, or clean it, however a doctor cleans it, and you see blood, and saliva, <laughs> and then you take that needle, and somebody sees it. If me and Sky are there, and we see you do it, and there's no blood coming out, and we see a guy that can't see, like he really can't see, and it's not like some guy that he wasn't planned. I just put, met those guys. Yeah, 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 right. I just exactly. met them. I yep. met them. And then okay, you still say okay. Well, he just picked that fucking guy, right? And then maybe by chance, somebody in there is with their friend and their friend's messed up and you fix them. Now, after that, when everybody leaves, they're going to go up to that, those people and say, did he really fix you? Well, I'll tell you something interesting. When I was teaching one in Des Moines, Iowa, we had someone in the audience. It was a big one. That was a big seminar. I think there was 48 chiropractors, if I remember correctly. 40, 48, I think it was. So this woman's in the audience, the chiropractor, and she says that she had a shoulder problem where it kept getting dislocated. So she went to the surgeon and they gave her a shoulder surgery to stabilize her shoulder so it wouldn't dislocate anymore. And it was successful. It didn't dislocate anymore. But ever since the surgery, she lost the range of motion in that shoulder. So a guy like you or me could go like this or like this or like this, whatever. But she could go about like this. But she said, that's what they told her. It wasn't a surprise. I said, look, we're going to fix your shoulder, but the way we have to fix it, it's going to lose. I know this will sound strange to everybody, but Nate was there. I told everyone in the room, I'm in front of 48 people. I'm putting myself on the line, right? I don't know her. I never met her. I didn't, even know, I didn't know she had that problem. She just raised her hand. I said, I'm going to restore her range of motion by talking to her. I'm not even going to touch her. And I talked to her in front of everyone for a minute. And I said, raise your arm now. She went to 90%. And then I just did something physically for a minute, and then she raised it 100%. Someone else in the audience, who's the guy, I think, mm -hmm. chiropractor, no raised his hand. He goes, I, he's, I don't even think, I, I, they might have known each other, I don't know. But he had the same thing. Chiropractor, dislocations, got the surgery, same exact thing. I said, come up here. I said, I said, um, don't do it, don't show me, just tell me how far you could move it. Like, since this, he said about 10%, about like her. I said, 
I told everyone, I said, you saw I talked to her, what I did with her already went into him. Show me how you could move it. He moved it 70%. Then I worked on him physically, 100%. Now that's, I mean, but, nobody, but nobody will believe it unless right. they see it. Did you see it? <clears throat> oh, I said. But I, I, but I mean, because I hate big pharma more than just as much as anybody else. I hate them. I can't stand them. Especially after this the whole podcast experience thing, I, I hate him more than I hated him yeah. before. Don't, don't hate him; it's I hate good him. for you. You know, uh, well, I, you dislike uh, yeah, yeah, you and Tony in this, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> bright color thing. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want believe me. You don't want Tommy to hate you. Trust me. <laughs> no. It's a whole different story. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but uh, I've seen Tommy mad. Don't, okay, don't get him mad. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, I'm, I'm very calm, uh, but. I want it to get out more, you know, because I've seen it, so I know. But before I saw it, I was like, eh, of course, yeah, I understand. eh, you could sit all day and tell me stories, right. you know, and yeah, okay, okay, right. right. Yeah, you just walk in and you sit with somebody for two minutes and you two just heal people. Gee, yeah, I believe you. And then I'm, I would think, and I pretty much think everybody else would think, it's like some magic voodoo shit that's not real. You're, you know, like you got like a secret card in your back pocket. Here's the, well, here's you know? the, here's the, here's the good thing. Because it's like magic. You know, yeah. when you when you speak of it and you talk about it, it sounds like a magician. You're right. And, but and, if you see it live, then you can't think fake magician. Now you think, whoa, there is other ways. Because I saw you do it. You saw it. And, I'll and think I don't know how the fuck you knew he had a digestive problem. Because I've been sitting with him for two or three days a week for nine months. And he, you know how Rob it. He won't, he's like Scott. These guys are, if they're half dead, you got to pry it out. They're stoic, very yeah, stoic. It, it, like I got to pry anything out of him, you know? <laughs> and Rob's the same Pretty way. <laughs> so for nine months, I had no idea. You touch him for 30 seconds, two seconds. Hey, do you have digestive problems? Yeah, I do. How do you know that? And if you right. want to see it, the last video, we did it live. Right. And you know it's interesting um, when it comes to doctors and healers. Let's get back to lay people in a second. When it comes to doctors, because let's say someone's watching this, they're a chiropractor, they're a doctor or healer of some type, they're a, they're an energy worker, whatever. They can just go and join the school online, and this, I'm leading to something. They can go to it's zoneschoolofhealing.com. They can just go there, join on the home page. Yeah, pull up the other tab yeah. uh, right next and, to it. Um, and the thing is this. There's a 60-day money-back guarantee. So if they start going through the material and they're like, this is BS. Wait a second. This is garbage. I can't believe I spent 1997. Good. Get your money back. So where should they go if they want to do that? It says right there, find out um, find out what zone school costs and includes. If you happen to click that, right in the homepage. Scott, right down? That, right there. Yeah, if you click yep. that. So if they go to the homepage and they click on that, this tells everything comes with it. And if you go down, if you kind of... Oh, actually, go to enroll now, I guess. Enroll now. That little uh, right at the top there. And there you go. And if they go to enroll now, then they can enroll right there. And when they enroll, they're going to get access to about 50 hours of online knowledge that they have lifetime access to. They can watch at their own pace. There's a 60-day money-back guarantee. So if they're going through it, they're like, this is BS. You know what? This is garbage. I can't believe I'm watching these freaking videos. What a joke. This guy's full of it. Good, get your money back. But I think I've given nine refunds and that of three thirteen hundred students. But they, pr they probably just shook you down anyway. Probably no, actually, you know what? They probably did. But the thing well, is, there's only nine out yeah, of that many. Yeah. So the thing is, so if someone's a doctor, chiropractor, healer, join right now. And if you don't like it, get a refund. Now, if you're a lay person, we can't join right now. But you'll email support at zonetechnique.com like we said and I'll, I'll make a course eventually that will say we'll thank uh, Tommy. you'll we'll have Tommy. another page on there yeah we'll thank Tommy for I've been brown beating him every time he yeah. comes in no you're right I'm <laughs> going to thank you I already thank you but I'm thanking. I'm going to thank you for that and go back to uh, Pete's uh, YouTube and you know your uh, Instagram uh, YouTube first tab very first tab uh, you've changed a lot with your YouTube so some of these names people don't know so go here, like with Jeff, sure, Carlos, I'll talk, I'll and who people it. are, so that if people want to watch it, they don't just see the name and like, who sure. the hell is this? Sure. So, actually, on Tommy's advice, Tommy's helped me a lot with. Uh, he mentions a marketing expert and and other stuff. Um, I had a YouTube channel for a while. Here it is. Um, so who is uh, Jeff Roth? Yeah. So, like Tommy, Tommy said to me, "Hey, just start uh, interviewing people. It's going to be good for the YouTube channel." So. Jeff Rothman is a guy that I think Nate and Tommy will agree probably knows more about 
world history, politics, the Middle East than most people living on this planet. And I interviewed him and it just came out a couple hours ago. And anyone who watches that will be highly enlightened. Carlos Sapone is one of the best living jujitsu guys in the world. Dr. James Huang is like kind of a conspiracy theorist when it comes to things like chemtrails, the fluoride in the water, um, weather manipulation. It's probably not conspiracy. It's probably all true, but he's That's interesting. into that stuff. Nico Gordo is a martial arts legend in Holland. Guy Mesger is a mixed martial arts living legend. Jake Shields um, is a great MMA fighter. Nicholas Pettis, I really enjoyed that one. One of my favorite is a, a very famous uh, kickboxer, originally from Denmark, lives in Japan. He's fluent in Japanese. And um, the rest are me doing stuff. Doing stuff, yeah. But it's it's really improved and, and gotten a lot better. You really did. And look at that. Look at that one. That's that's uh, that's a good clip. Um, it says Zone School Result. It's like a 30 second little video and thanks to Tommy for that because he's uh, he's in it yeah we'll play it click it if it decides to play this would be good if it could play because it's really good oh it's too really oh too bad that's a good one Uh, maybe refresh it I don't know if he can get it he can get it It seems to be acting yeah it's like stuck yeah don't worry about it Uh, it's not a big deal yeah, but you've definitely uh, improved with the whole YouTube page, everything else. So congratulations Thank on you. that. And now you joined Zone School. Mm-hmm. So now you're in with Pete, Yep. right? So what was the first person you worked on with Pete or yourself within Pete? Well, you know, it's, a, it's actually a great question. I um, One of the things that I remember very clearly about my experience in getting into what I was doing. Working on neck and back pain. On. When he That's okay. Back, I didn't even talk about neck and back pain. It was invented I'll cut for liver. I'll cut this. Don't worry about it. No problem. No problem. Okay. Okay. So we'll what? just go like this. What were you saying? I forget what the fuck. Uh, he, he was talking I'll, about the, okay, first, yeah, so, the first so, patient so, he walked on. The so, worked on. So okay. So 20. I joined Zone School, like I already alluded to earlier, for various reasons. But one of the reasons was. Is, is that uh, my wife was dealing with uh, an eye issue. She had very uh, dry eyes. She had worn contacts for years, had gotten Lasix to try to correct her vision. Um, they were tearing too much, so they put plugs in her eyes, which then made her eyes very dry. I was adjusting her chiropractically and doing all these different things, you know, holistically that, you know, I knew how to do. And to be honest, it was very frustrating because she was suffering and you know when your eyes hurt and you can't see and they're red and bloodshot it's a nightmare so um i that was one of the impetus of joining zone school i went to that las vegas seminar i'll never forget this is a great story um i took the red eye home on sunday because we did a two-day two-day seminar i was there all day took the red eye home got back to atlanta about uh, 5 6 a.m drove back to my house and at 7 a.m. I pulled in and I'm like, all right, here we go. Take a picture of your eyes right now. And she did, uh, or I did. And then um, I did a zone adjustment on her right then. And I think I did another one a little later on that day. Um, and then that night I took a picture of her eyes and they were completely normal. I mean, it was like her eyes were like bloodshot red, like in a bad place, puffy. And within 24 hours of working on her, from everything that I'd learned in the two plus months that I had joined, but then going to that seminar where I saw, you know, the blind man see, so to speak, th- that changed. So that was, and then I remember posting a picture and, you know, uh, it was very cool. I was very amped up about that. So that to me was just huge because, you know, nothing is better really than helping somebody who you love, who you're dealing with every day. I mean, I help people all the time, but I don't like, you know, hang out with them. I do my work. That's what I'm there to do. I'm supposed to do that, and that's great. But when you have an impact on somebody that, you know, you're there, you love, you care about, that you're with all the time, and then they look at you as like, oh, my God, you know, that's when that's when everything, you know, started to really click right away. And it has been said in the past, um, and it's said, well, not in the past, it's, 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 it's tough. Dealing with, you know, family members can be difficult, you know, whether it's your parents, your, your siblings, your, your, your spouse, 
even your kids, you know, uh, a lot of folks, you know, take, you know, refer them out to see other, because it's just a different vibe, a different relationship. I've been very blessed because I've been able to work on, you know, well, my parents didn't, don't know any different. So I work on them and they're just like, you know, they just love it because they don't, you know, they're, they're, they're great with whatever at this point. <laughs> they don't know shit. But when it comes down to, uh, about healing, excuse me, sorry, mom. Uh, <laughs> but when it comes down, when it comes down to, you know, working on your family and doing stuff like that, that's like, you know, life changing stuff after you've been doing all, it was, it was huge. And then that was just like, step one you know pretty much right away and then it's like okay and then the next thing you know like i'm in my office i remember i i had a patient on the table and um i started talking to her very well established we had great rapport already but you know started talking to her about something that was bothering her giving her the headaches and i didn't I, i'll never forget this because i did what i did i didn't even adjust her i didn't even touch her which that had never happened before um and i was getting ready to after i you know and she got off the table and gave me a hug and said, I, it's amazing. It was, and, and I was just kind of like taken aback. I was like, but I went with it. I was like, I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to lay down. I'm going to lock it in. I was like, okay, great. And she paid and left. I didn't even adjust her. I was like, I didn't, it, didn't even, it didn't even matter. So it's like, you know, when you start seeing things and doing things at this high level um, or, you know, however you want to explain it, it's, it's profound. And it's super cool to get those results and see that. And, and like I tell folks, because one of the things that I do do is I do discovery calls. So there was a button on the website where it's like, hey, if you, you know, you're interested in what's going on, but you got some questions and you want to talk to a guy or a gal, but if you want to talk to a guy that's been in this and doing this, you book a discovery call. And I do, you know, a few of them here and there to help folks that are interested on the fence, want to know how this applies to them, wants to get some direct answers. And, you know, I've signed up over 300 people to zone school through the, yeah. through the process. Um, and I understand it at a very high level, not only for chiropractors, which I am, but, you know, for massage therapists, for the energy workers, for the acupuncturists, all these other folks, you know, that are like, how can a chiropractor teach me how to do, you know, something in my profession? You know, but I don't know, we're all healers and, you know, very well versed on how that all works. But that being said, you look at this stuff and it's, you know, like I said earlier, it's just like, it's the way that you think, it's the way that you operate, you know. I can't imagine doing things any other way, but it's it, it's it's you. You know, you're the healer. Pete's the healer. You you, you see, it's like the th stuff that comes out of his mouth is profound. It, it it it's important. Healing with your words is mind blowing. And at that Vegas seminar, that was one of the things that was most mind blowing to me. We didn't even bring it up. Was is that I'd never met a remote healer before. I never met somebody that healed people over zoom calls and i saw I, I met a woman there i met a, i met a woman there that was clearing someone's zones from the other side of the room without even touching them and she was you know and i was just like what the f i mean so at that point i was like maybe this chiropractic is all bullshit anyway i mean you don't even need to move bones or do any of this stuff you can heal somebody with just your words because in other words just to be clear in zone school there is a physical technique there's a, you saw a little bit of it, but that's 10% of what I teach. 90% are principles of healing, that's right. which are not taught anywhere I know besides this place. So when they learn these principles, they can be a chiropractor or an energy worker or a acupuncturist or a naturopathic doctor. And they can use these principles and however good results they got, because maybe they did. Let's say it was an acupuncturist says, no, I got good results. Good. If you were here, you're going to be here. If you're a chiropractor that was here, you're going to be here. If you're an energy worker that was here, you're going to be here. Wherever you were at as a healer, your results will be profoundly better because you understand these principles. And that's why even our basic course has 50 hours of knowledge. It takes, there's a lot in there. Not, I was, I was going to say, I always tell folks that, you know, this starts off as, you know, potentially a tool in your box that will be your whole toolbox. So, you know, there's many ways to pepper it into your practice and integrate it, but the expansiveness of this is incredible. And we all can agree that, you know, hey, if uh, if there's different ways for you to drive to work, what are you gonna take? You're gonna take the path of least resistance every time. You're not gonna, you know, take the long way. And when you realize how efficient you can be by doing this technique, not only with your time, but the results, it's a no brainer. And that's, you know, it's, it's powerful stuff. And when you get to the brass tacks of talking to somebody about what they're looking for, what they want, what why they're on the phone, what they're why they're intrigued by this, it's very easy to uh, answer those questions with the utmost confidence that it'll work for them. 
if you have somebody that comes in and you've been doing this a while <clears throat> and they come in because it's their last option, but their mind isn't with it. Their mind's against it. <clears throat> their mind says, this is bullshit, but I'm just going to try it anyway. Does it not work? Here's like, because uh, when we were talking with Tony, you know, like the meditation thing, the hypnosis thing, he was saying, uh, what, like, you have to be willing and accepting, right? So if somebody comes to you and they say, you know, I have problem A, B, C, D, E, but in their mind, they're not willing and they're not accepting. They think it's, they're just there because somebody made them go there, whatever it may be. Does that affect the healing that you do? Well, is it? Two things that you mentioned one thing you mentioned was it's their last resort they've tried most of my patients on their last resort my average patient who comes to me with whatever the hell's wrong with them <laughs> like hey dr beat i've been to two chiropractors two acupuncturists two medical doctors and they're still sick so right it's the at, at the point where they're like i got nothing else right. to lose the last so resort why not, right? i'm used to that part that's no big deal yeah but i find with those people because i've had those people that you described you described it quite well I, I find those people are actually easy to work with, and I'll tell you why. Because they're kind of, they're very skeptical. And a very skeptical person, they don't care about theories, they don't care about philosophy, they just want results. They just want results. So I just, I say to them, listen, they, they tell me they have migraine headaches, so their head is, they don't even want to be alive, their head yeah, is. Yeah, but I'm talking about, Pete, like a person, you can't talk, you can't get them in the zone, they're, they're just there because you've had to have run across it. They're just there because, Somebody made them go. Yeah, they have. Okay. I have. Can you still heal a person yes, yes. fully? Yes, because I change that for them. Without, Even if they don't accept it. Without them knowing it, I make them accept it. Because what I do with them is that's, I don't I make I don't make them accept it by make by saying like I don't convince them. I don't say like, Oh, I know I know you don't really philosophically understand this, but let me explain how this works. I don't do that at all. I, I just I just simply I just, say I just simply say, You're I say, look, you're telling me Every time you eat a meal, you get a stomach ache. That's, am, I, am I hearing you right? Every time you eat a meal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you get a stomach ache. That's what you're talking Okay. So I'm going to work with, I'm, I'm, su I'm suggesting that you show up here weekly. And I'm going to balance you. I'm going to, I said, just so you know, you got like that because your body was unbalanced. I'm going to determine where your body is unbalanced. And I'm going to balance it in such a way that you're going to eat your meals and you're going to feel perfect. And then in the not too distant future, you're going to be sitting right in that seat telling me, Dr. Pete, I don't know how you did it, but I my digestion's fixed. So I say, just show up and that's what's going to happen. I'm not even going to waste either of our time by explaining the mechanism. And they like that. They like that because I'm not trying to, oh, well, you don't understand the brain and this. That's good. I just say, you just show up here and pretty soon you're going to be telling me you're all better. And then they stay. You just get right to the point. Well, like when you did Rob and you pulled that di digestive thing, right then and there you sold him. Yes. So even if he, even which it was, even though his mind was like, this is yeah, bullshit, yeah. but I'll, I'll do this for the podcast and we'll see. Well, this, I, I got nothing to lose. This, this is and, I look and once you said digestive problem, remember? And yeah, he goes, you. how did you know that? You had him. Yeah. You yeah. had him right then and there. Good so do you do that a lot with, yes, with thick-headed patients yeah <laughs> I because it's a nice way to because, say hard-headed because let's say Is that, that allowed to say because let's let you can't say blindside right, right. now i didn't know that watch that on your youtube okay, okay. can't say blindside didn't know that blind people okay oh, i see okay even though you can fix right, it, it. <laughs> i was gonna say that's yeah, not a problem anymore yeah. Yeah. Years, yeah but um fuck you too uh, yeah 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 <laughs> but um the thing is this let's say someone comes in you know a person with a digestive problem that i mentioned well, let's say they also have high blood pressure but it doesn't occur to them to tell me that. You know, they know that they know they have high blood pressure, but they don't they don't think to tell me. They just think to tell me about the digestion, which they're already skeptical about anyway. I say, okay, I'm gonna feel some points on your head, and these points will tell me what's happening in your body. And in ten seconds I tell them that their circulation is way off. They're like, Man, I didn't tell him my circulation's off. I didn't write it on the entrance form. He felt my head for fifteen seconds. It, they're fascinated. They just become wide open. Then I'll fix their digestion and I'll fix up their blood pressure. Done. Yeah. Fascina Feel done. That's fascination at the highest level. Yeah. And that's and you know this, that people come to the office most of the time, they don't write everything down that's going on. So, I mean, you know, you find your way and they're like, Oh wow, I didn't even tell you that. And then when that happens, it's it's you know, here's very, very a very common one. That's in, I don't know if the word's common, but something that happens sometimes is I'll get a woman come in she, for whatever. she come in for whatever she came in for. I'm not going to go into all the details, but there's a point I can feel, and when I feel that point, 
I know that she has a problem with her period. It could be a painful period or irregular. And I'm, I also know that she has headaches and her feet are cold. So I feel her head for five seconds. And I said, let me ask you a question. Do you, um, you, you, when you get your cycle, is it cramp? Yeah, they have terrible period cramps. I said, your feet are cold? Yeah, they're always freezing. Do you get headaches? So they're like, they're sold. But I can tell that. And then in a few weeks, their period's fine. Their head feels fine. Their feet are warm. That's right. Because you can go like this, 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 and, and you can call oh. out things that's wrong with them. And then they're they're amazed. And then boom. Right. right? So, Pete, give that uh, email again of how people, we can get that fucking button on there. Yes. Maybe the fifth time. I will. I will thank you for that. <laughs> so, um, so if someone emails support at zonetechnique.com, and just put in the subject line, lay person's course. And we got 700 of those. I'll make a course. We'll email you all back and you can join it. And obviously, if you're a chiropractor or a doctor of any type or healer of any type, just go to zoneschoolofhealing.com and you can enroll on the homepage. And if you don't like it, get a refund. And your YouTube? YouTube is, uh, if they just search Zone School of Healing within YouTube, it's going to come right up. Now, it'll all be in the description. And Nate, how can we get a hold of you? You can find me on uh, Instagram. Nate Brown DC with an E Brown with an E uh, and then I'm on Facebook or you can send me an email uh, nbrowndc at gmail.com is easy so and email support you could do that too so I'm in line with all of this stuff great well I have both of you guys stuff in the description and I'd uh, love to have you guys back again Come back no, this was a good conversation this was fun yeah, yeah and there's a lot I mean, we got a lot more we got a lot more we could talk about too which is great yeah it's so fun you guys are good together yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks Tommy thank you guys thank very you, much Scott. appreciate it thank you thank you, thank you.